Anyone familiar with IntraWeb should be familiar with our famous guest demo, which dates back to at least 1996. While the guest demo is very simplistic, it is purposeful. Its purpose is both as a basic reference demo, but also to introduce developers to IntraWeb without complexity. That being said, Guess has never been completely bare and has always demonstrated several core features for those who dig into it. I will not dig into all aspects of IntraWeb 17 here. For deeper coverage of the designer, IWML, and other aspects, please check out the other videos or sections we have done on these. One thing I'll repeat about the designer is that the designer is a preview designer, and while we feel it is pretty amazing, there will be a lot more improvements before its final release. For IntraWeb 17, we have created an IntraWeb 17 specific version of GUESS. Let's dig into it. This is the beta designer for IntraWeb 17. This time we've used jQuery UI accordions to group information about the guest demo. As it is truly a what you see is what you get designer, many of the elements are live at design time. Let's take a look at the server code. The code is all very straightforward, but there is something very important here that is new to intro of 17. We could have easily used simple fields as seen in the private section of the page class to store the count and magic number. This is how guess in IntraWeb 15 works. Note that instead of simply using fields, we have also created published properties. This is not required, but doing so lets us use a new feature of IntraWeb 17. Published properties on a page create two-way values that are automatically synchronized between the front and the back end. This allows JavaScript in the browser to not only read these values, but also change them, and the changed values will be visible by the back end server code as well. Guess uses these properties in two areas. For the label showing the guest count, IntraWeb Markdown is combined with data binding to display the number of guesses. This code executes on the front end in the browser. When we run this, it will display the guest count without needing additional code to update the label. Markdown can also be used to apply textual styles, insert links, bind to data, or fill in user-defined functionality. For the Go button, we have defined both front-end and back-end events. Front-end events are written in JavaScript. In this example, we do some front-end validation of the input to avoid extra server calls. We also allow the user to find out what the magic number was, but also change it to 22. This is done by holding down the Shift key while clicking the Go button. When this happens, the magic number is displayed but also changed to 22 in the front-end code. Because the value is automatically synchronized between the front-end and back-end, the server code will also see a value of 22. When both a front-end and back-end event are defined, normally only the front-end code will execute and override the back-end Delphi event. However, if you want both to be called, simply make a call to the call server event method. It is done this way to allow the front-end code to decide not only if to call the back-end event, but when. By allowing to control when it is called, front-end code can be executed both before or after or before and after the back-end code, allowing complex scenarios to be handled with ease. Let's take a look at it running. Here are the jQuery UI accordions. Let's make a few guesses. And now let's activate the cheat with a shift key. 